So today you join me down on what is my favorite swim on the River Thames, but today I'm gonna to be doing something slightly different to what I normally do. Usually I'd be out here with the feed rod, which I still am, and although we're gonna be on the maggots, I've also got some worms here as well in hope to try and nick a big perch. But rather than fishing for the pike today, I'm gonna to use the same method that I used when I was night fishing for bream. And it's quite a simple method really. It's, a, it's an inside, uh, inline lead with a really short hook link really, especially for river fishing. But because I've got such a big snag on the left hand side of me, I want it to be as short as possible. Because if anything big does grab it and pick it up, I don't want it to be able to run and dart straight into them snags. We've had that before previously when we've had a pike from this spot. So I've made it really nice and small. It's on a Ronnie rig and I'm going to be fishing a hot fish boilie on that with a PVA bag as well, which I've already pre-made the PVA bags. So that's going to be the very first thing that we do today. There are only 15 mil boilies and I'm using the Ronnie rig because it gets the boilie nice and close to the hook and I've told, I've said this many times before because we're on the river, because we're trying to you know, just snag whatever we can out of here whether it be big chub, bream or barbel or I mean a carp now at this time of year would be amazing but I'd very much doubt we'd get one but with the chub you want it nice and close to the hook because of that beak like mouth, they don't suck the food up like a carp or a barber would so we're trying to bag something big but you know we've got to keep our options open for what's out here in the river and the PVA bag I'm simply hooking straight onto the hook like that and I'm not going to throw this out far because again today the weir is open to its max so we've got quite a heavy flow coming through and I can't get it out there without it being picked up and took away so I'm fishing just on the edge of the shelf there as simple as that so hopefully at some point or another in the day this will go sneaking off but um, like I say we're also going to be using the feeder rod like I'm always using but the difference on that is I'm going to try along with the maggots you just stick a couple of small worms on there chop them probably as well and for what we've learned in the past on this river is the bream even though they can be quite big they um they're very delicate with their bites so i want to keep that as sensitive as possible we've got no rain forecast today there's barely any wind but like I say, we have still got a heavy flow coming down because the, the weir is wide open. I don't quite understand why. I mean, the river is still quite high, to be honest with you, but we haven't had a, an awful lot of rain. So I'm not too sure as to why that is, but hey-ho, we just got to hope that it doesn't kill the fishing in any way. I'm going to start off with a single red maggot and I need to get my scissors out really because I'm probably going to have to chop this, these worms even though they're the smallest ones I could get Sit that shut but apart from um, introducing the worms the rig's still the same. I'm still using the mini feeders for this time of year. Again, like I've said before, you don't want to be overfeeding any of your swims this time of year. These might actually be all right, but I think I will snip them just to start off with. If things pick up, maybe I'll start putting whole ones on, because they're not that big. Light twitch there. Maybe. What have we got here? Oh! No, no, no. Come hither. 
No, come hither. Well, I was wrong. It wasn't a perch. It was something that's eluded us all season, really. A roach. Amazing bar of silver, bright red fins. Not a hybrid this time, a definite full on 100% purebred roach. And I just wish we had more of them this year because they've been so few and far between. And they are definitely one of my favorite silver fish. So let's slip this guy back. Away you go, little fellow. So I was wrong. I thought it was gonna be perch to start off with. I would never have guessed a roach to be honest with you with the lack of them that we've had this year. So that is a pleasant start. It'd be nice if we got a few more of them, but every time I say stuff like that in this series, it seems to be almost like the commentator's curse. I say something like that and then it either just completely dies down or I don't see them ever again. Same as the perch. I was bigging them up when we was catching them on the regular and and then as soon as I started to really feel confident that it was only going to be a matter of time that I was going to get a really nice one because I mean we've had it you know we had a few what I would say semi decent ones but still haven't had a perch that has been like oh yes that's a nice nice perch you know what I mean I mean they're not perch that I've been unhappy with it's just like I say they haven't been something where you're like yeah that is a nice perch one of the things with roach is they are quite shy fish they're okay providing that you hit a shoal of them but if you've got a shoal of more aggressive fish down there like perch or even chub because chub can be quite aggressive feeders the roach do tend to sit back a little bit and they're a little bit timid on that side of things. Rodney, what we got here? Another roach, this is a better looking roach. Right in the top lip. That's probably got to be the best roach that we've had so far today. And what's that now, number four? So not bad at all. Look at them fins. I love the blood red fins on a roach. That's what makes them so endearing. And the color coded eyes as well. A proper little bar of silver, that one. Let's slip him back before he jumps out my hand. So we are most definitely on the old roach. Starting to cheer up a little bit now because it was, it started off so slow. I mean, I've got here literally at sunrise we was just walking down the river it's quite a walk from where the cars parked to get to this swim and it took a long time to get the first fish in but now it seems as though they're coming a little bit faster it's just unfortunate that they didn't come on this quick when we first got here because we could have perhaps had a, a half decent amount of roach there's a bite there's a fish what we got here <laughs> probably don't need to net this but I will just in case for the simple reason is that since they opened these gates, and it's literally been about two hours now since I've even had a bite. Not the smallest one we've had today, and he is not the biggest one that lives down there. Right, well, today we've had a few roach out, which ain't been bad. The big boy rod, unfortunately, hasn't done absolutely anything yet again. But what have we learned? We've learned today that it seems to be that if you're getting one species, that is the species that you're gonna consistently get. It seems as though we've had hardly any roach for the entire season. But today, for whatever reason, whether it's because of the weather, whether it's because of these perch and the smaller chub have disappeared for now, that the roach has seemed to have been turned on and had the confidence to come in and have a feed for once. But um, we're going to probably come down here and maybe try out for a pike again because 
the PVA bags and boilies in this spot anyway are not working. Um, if I stayed here till dark, maybe we would have got some bream on it, I don't know. Maybe if we'd headed up to the weir, we could have hit a barbel, but the way that it's just, it seems to be open to the max and it's pushing so much water through, if we got closer to that weir, it would have just been impossible to fish on either rod. So that was a no-no. But um, yeah, next time, I think we come down here, we do the same thing again with some worms again because the worms seem to be doing pretty well. But next time, the big boy rod will be out there for a pike. So until next time, guys, you know the score by now. I'd be Mark Payne. This be taken on the Thames. And I will see you later.